Sangamo controls, time switch and rate changer. This one, it can do time switch function, which is involves switching a load, and it can also do a rate change function on a dual tariff electricity meter. Certain electricity meters may include. Sangamo Western S309.2 or the later Sangamo Schlumberger SPA02. This time switch is quartz driven, unlike the traditional synchro powered one. Uh, this one will have electronics in it and it ticks. Uh, one tick every second. The switching capacity on this one is 100 amps and the rate change contact on it is 2 amp. The voltage for this one is 200 to 250 volts uh, in, and it can accept either 50 hertz or 60 hertz because it's uh, electronic. This time switch and rate changer was first put into service in 1988. Uh, I'll see if I can get the zoom on the specification plate there on the bottom there. There it is. Okay, you can see it says S88E there. Just at the bottom and this one is X. Eastern Electricity Board. So this one was removed from service when the battery in it failed. Okay, so that's what uh, caused the, the discontinuation of that one. And that's what happens with the majority of them. The battery in them gives out and they stop working when that happens. Okay, so if you've got one of those and it suddenly stops working, you can more or less uh, be assured that it's the battery inside it which has failed. It uh, fails to recharge anymore, and then it shorts out the time switch mechanism, and thus it stops. Down there on the floor, we have got a little selection of parts for a time switch that, uh, that also fails. This one, however, it didn't fail electronically. It uh, failed mechanically. Down there on the floor, next to the clock face and a few other parts, you can see the electronic circuit board. And what we've got there is uh, one of the circuit boards with the battery removed from it. There's the circuit board. Now, there's a little gap just there. You can see the three terminals on the top, most nearest to the camera. And those three terminals are the solder joints for a what's now removed battery. Again, I received this one because it had failed in a similar kind of fashion. The battery had uh, given up, it wouldn't recharge anymore. And therefore it caused the time switch to stop functioning. This one was removed and when I acquired it, it turns out that the, there's a little, little operating lever which interacts with the levers on the clock face and one of them just snapped off upon it breaking 
that was the end of it. The time switch was rendered completely useless, and therefore it was dismantled for spares. As shown there, there are a few of the spares. Not all of the entire time switch was uh, salvaged on the basis that certain other things were also broken and couldn't be saved or reused in any other way. So therefore, the uh, those parts were disposed of. Uh, yeah, that one was X. I think it's Scottish Electric Board, that one. So if I can zoom on the specifications for that one. There it is. As if this tripod will behave. We've got South of Scotland electricity board there. There it is. And that one was... Uh, what is it? Q345. The one on the wall, which we were looking at previously, is a Q346. The operation of these differ in such a way that how it turns on and off. With this one, it had a day emission device, and with one of them, it will emit on operations, and with the other one, it will omit off operations. And that is the difference between a Q345 and a Q346. A bit later on, that time switch which is shown there on the wall. I will be planning to do a video based little hack on that. And that will involve opening it up, removing the mechanism and the battery that's in there, which has failed. That battery which is fixed to the circuit board will be removed and I will be adding in place of it a pair of little flying leads and then onto the end of those flying leads I will be attaching two AA NICAD batteries and they will be wired in parallel. The supplied battery in one of those when there's a power cut it will keep the time switch running for 100 hours which is four days and four hours continuous. The battery would normally just trickle charge over over time when it's connected to the mains. And there we are. But that one has given up. And in another video, when I can, I will be opening that one up and performing a little uh, battery hack on it. And installing a couple of AA rechargeable NICAD batteries. Now, I don't know how that would behave if I used anything other than NICAD batteries, whether it would be uh, lithium-ion, or uh, uh, there's another one. So there's lithium-ion and the uh, nickel-metal hydride, that's the other one. I don't know how that would behave, and for safety reasons, I would rather not put such batteries in there because those time switches up in front of the camera were originally designed with NICAD batteries or nickel cadmium batteries uh, based into the recharging circuit and it may be with nickel metal hydride or lithium ion that the battery might be overcharged or given too much current and could either overheat or explode so for safety when I remove the battery in that one I will be replacing it with NICAD batteries and that will be two AA NICAD batteries in there and that will give it a significant amount of backup time a bit more than 100 hours and that's it but that one as you see it there it is non-functional because uh, the battery in it's given up, which is why it's removed from service.